Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. I hope you guys had a great weekend, a happy fourth, and all that damn jazz, okay? So anyways, I want to come on here and finally do a podcast on my thoughts on the whole Jeffrey Epstein, Ghislaine Maxwell, you know, just this whole situation that, you know, we've been talking about off and on on the internet for years, okay? And like I've been telling you guys for a long time, the swamp is finally being drained, And I believe the catalyst that initially unplugged the drain in the swamp was the whole Harvey Weinstein situation. When those white women started coming out and they started the, you know, well, they they didn't start, but they hijacked the Me Too movement from the black woman, Teronica Burke. And this became a viral movement, the whole Me Too, Time's Up, you know, and Oprah Winfrey jumped on board, even though, you know, she was very close friends with, you know, Harvey Weinstein and a bunch of others. Um... I believe that was the catalyst that has us to where we're at now in 2020. So for years, a lot of people in the truther or, you know, some people call them the conspiracy community. And I kind of hate that word because it's just, you know, it's very dismissive. It's a word to try and paint people as crazy. You know, folks who think outside the box make them look weird. So I'm not a big fan of the word conspiracy theorist. So I call them truthers, okay? So a lot of people in the truther community have been taught my Jeffrey Epstein for years. That is how I was first introduced to him and his name. I didn't know nothing about this guy growing up or, you know, all these circles that he traveled in. Never heard of him until I got older. And people in the truther community were talking about, you know, how, you know, this huge billionaire guy was able to get like a sweetheart of a deal in Florida, you know, do house arrest for basically raping, molesting, grooming, you know, multiple girls. And he literally got a slap on the wrist. And so um, the case ended up being brought back to light about two years ago when people started digging and, you know, the, the Me Too Time's Up movement was in full force. And at that point, when they went to investigate, they saw this was a deal that no one had ever gotten in life and that there was a lot of corruption involved in him getting that sweetheart deal. If you guys remember, um, the prosecutor in the Jeffrey Epstein case was Alexander Acosta, who was also very close to Trump. He was President Trump's um, labor secretary. So when I tell you all this shit is interconnected and it comes back full circle, it's crazy. So a lot of people were calling for his firing because it was so blatantly obvious, the favoritism and the bullshit that went into the uh, Jeffrey Epstein case um, in Florida for getting him that sweetheart deal. When all the onion layers were peeled back, they found a lot of corruption. And because Alexander Costa did not want to face, you know what I'm saying, what he did wrong, and he just decided to resign. He literally announced his resignation for the 2008 sex crimes, and he blew off into the wind, okay? And so Jeffrey Epstein was found guilty. Um, He was in a jailhouse, and in this jailhouse, funny enough, um, cameras were off, the guards were asleep, his um, his, uh, prison cellmate was, like, moved out of there for some strange reason, and Jeffrey Epstein allegedly committed suicide. So that never sounded right to any of us with common sense. I believe he was suicided. Um, For those who don't know what that means, that's somebody who is basically forced to kill themselves so they can play it off as a suicide. But I don't believe that he killed himself. I believe he was either murdered or suicided, one of the two. So anyways, so... I guess after he killed himself, people thought that was going to be the end of the story. The victims didn't really get justice, but he's dead. So all is well in the land of Hollyweird. And then Netflix dropped a documentary a few weeks ago called Filthy Rich. The disgraced financier Jeffrey Epstein is dead. Did he kill himself? Was he killed? There was something happening here that was bigger than just Jeffrey Epstein. And I watched it. I watched it all in one night. Matter of fact, I've watched it twice. And I thought it was a really good documentary. It really broke down the entire Jeffrey Epstein case. I did not know that it went as deep as it did. 
I thought maybe he just, you know, molested and raped just a few women. But to see that this was literally a pyramid scheme of pedophilia was so disturbing. To see how he groomed a lot of these young girls who were on the right track initially and their lives are just totally falling off and how... He basically made them then turn around and recruit other girls. So I'm going to molest you. And now in order for you to get some money because you're broken, you're from the wrong side of Palm Beach. I'm going to give you $200 a pop per girl that you bring to me. And they would do that because these were young girls, 14 to 17 years old. You know, and so they would bring their friends and their cheerleading teammates and, you know, just whoever to Jeffrey Epstein's home. They would get their two hundred dollars and be on their way and bring more girls and the girls who were molested. They would turn around and do the same thing. This was sick. This was sick. And y'all know how I feel about pyramid schemes, honey. I can't stand them. Everything from that fucking CBD tea to Nutriburst to damn Cutco knives. I hate pyramid schemes. So to see a pyramid scheme based on sexual exploitation of young women was just really heartbreaking and disturbing. One of the things I kept trying to figure out is how did this man come into his wealth? He wasn't born into money. Um, he literally just seemed to kind of scheme his way and rub shoulders with certain people. But I feel like th there's just something more to the whole Jeffrey Epstein character. There's something very, very dark, demonic, and sinister. And it just does not make sense to me. Like, no one can really explain where he got abundance where he got the abundance of his wealth from i know some people said that he was you know scheming money from certain business partners and stuff but even still just his home in mar-a-lago was 20 million he owned homes you know some of the biggest homes in arizona um he owned the biggest town home in new york i mean property in new york is so expensive he owned the biggest town home in new york he owned his own private island this man had unlimited wealth prestige and status. He was known as this Gatsby-like figure of mystery. He was stunningly rich. He had a $20 million house, his own private island in the Caribbean. And because of that wealth and prestige, he was able to infiltrate all types of circles, like the modeling world, the fashion industry, you know, the, the political sphere. He was hanging out with people like Donald Trump and Bill Clinton, you know, with celebrities like uh, Chris Tucker and Will Smith, hanging out with fashion models like Naomi Campbell and so many others. But the main person that he was always with, his right hand, his right hand woman was Ghislaine Maxwell. OK, and Ghislaine Maxwell was an older woman. Um, she's of British descent, and her father was a really famous guy back in the day, and he ended up being disgraced. But she was the main one procuring these young girls. She would get them very comfortable, get them relaxed, and basically make it seem to them like this was normal. This is what you do to please a man. This is how you carry yourself. And in a lot of these instances, from what I found out in the documentary, she herself participated in also molesting, groping, and sleeping with these young girls. So she was just as perverted as Jeffrey Epstein, okay? So one of the main victims that's been very, very vocal is Virginia Roberts Gouffre, and I, I really like her. Um, she has kept her foot on everybody's neck. From Ghislaine Maxwell to Naomi Campbell to all types of people. And you and especially Prince Andrew. And they try to dismiss her for a long time as being crazy, being an attention seeker, being money hungry. And it was none of that. And now it's coming out that everything that Miss Gouffre, uh, Virginia Roberts Gouffre was saying was absolutely factual. You know, so the rabbit hole with this situation goes so deep, it's extremely disturbing. And I've done a lot of research on this just for my own edification, but it is extremely disturbing. So if you guys do not know, I had posted, um, I believe it was last Thursday, um, she was finally arrested. But what was so funny is that the place where Gaylene Maxwell was arrested, she wasn't in some bunker hiding out. This woman was right in the open. Okay, like I always say, everything in Hollywood is literally an open secret. She was literally laying out in a lavish hideout. It was a $1 million New Hampshire estate. It's called Tucked Away, funny enough. She'd been laying low there for months. The crazy part is she was able to buy this property because she was in cahoots with this lawyer named Jeffrey Roberts. 
Um, he's an attorney, and his law firm is Nutter McLennan and Fish LLP. And basically what he did, he basically set up a secretive LLC and bought Ghislaine Maxwell's home in cash. And it does not have her name on any of the documents. He specializes in high net worth individuals in tax planning. When I tell you the rabbit hole goes deep, it goes deep. You're not even allowed to have more than $8,000 worth of cash on you as a regular citizen. If not, that's cause for concern. Even if you go to a dealership to go buy a car and you want to put down a certain amount of cash, anything over $8,000 has, has to be reported immediately to like the FBI, tax people, all that stuff. This man was able to buy a home in cash without any of Ghislaine Maxwell's information on the paperwork. Do you understand how many people in high places she had in her back pocket? And the crazy thing is, why even buy a home? Why not just go in some island in the middle of Timbuktu somewhere and hide the fuck out? But that's how bold she was. She thought she was untouchable. So anyways, to get away from the lawyer situation, she was arrested. If you guys want to see the pictures of the house, honey, this house, I mean, she was living her best life in this tuckaway palace. Um, the pictures on the Daily Mail. But so she was arrested last Thursday. The FBI made the announcement. This was on July 2nd. So this was a big deal. Okay, this was a big deal because for months, everybody has been like, where is Ghislaine? They were basically treating her like, where is Waldo? Where is Carmen San Diego? Where is Ghislaine Maxwell? What's up? Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.